first of all, I really enjoyed Casino Jack. I thought it was uh, fascinating. It gave me a lot of understanding of the story that I didn't have before. One of the things that was really interesting to me was uh, the character of Neil Bowles. He's a pretty compelling character. He had been just a name on a page to me before I saw the documentary. Um, sure. Can you tell me sort of how, how you came how you came out of the documentary, seeing him and his character, his personality, what you think about him? Well, I think that Neil and and actually Neil's relationship to Bob is really the the emotional heart of the documentary. It's the, these are two guys who came to Washington with the purest of motives, you know, wanting to make a difference, wanting to end what they saw as democratic corruption. And they really were, were quite high-minded. Uh, and then they became utterly corrupted. Uh, and their relationship was destroyed. And Neil, you know, became the poster child for the revolving door, you know, taking, uh, leaving the important job on the Hill in order to cash in for big bucks with a lobbying firm, you know, on K Street. So, uh, so it, it became terribly important and, and in a personal way showed just how corrosive the system is. Uh, also, Neil as a character, I think, was remarkable in the sense that he really uh, internalized, I think, um, a sense of um, responsibility and, uh, and remorse. Uh, and that's, uh, that's good and interesting to see. So that he was able to talk honestly about what he had done, but without, you know, trying to elude responsibility. Yeah, that authentic remorse is kind of rare in telling stories about Washington, for sure. It sure is. It sure is. There's usually some other problem. There's usually some other person whose fault it is. Let's talk about Tom Delay for a second. I've got a two-part question. First, I'm I'm just really curious how you were, you know, how you were able to get Tom Delay to talk on camera about this and then on on a you know deeper level i'm wondering when you when you go into an interview like that um and you have a pretty strong sort of opinion of the man and his role in all of this going into the interview uh, do you go into the interview sort of open to being open to open hearing his side or open to being persuaded or do you pretty much say well i'm glad he gave me the interview, and I'm just going to get in there and get it and get out. You know, does that make sense? Yes. Um, uh, We got Tom DeLay um, when he was on his book tour. Wow. So that made it easier. You know, it's like, oh, you're on your book tour. Can we talk to you? (laughs) And... um, and it was actually uh, it, 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 because of logistical things. It was actually my uh, one of my producers who interviewed him. Um, but my philosophy on the interview is, in general, is that yeah, it's actually our job to get the people we interview to say what they want to say the way they want to say it. And obviously, you know, we ask probing questions, we we redirect, but you know, it's not. I'm not really into the kind of the gotcha interview. It's like on September 24th, you said X, and in yeah, fact, it's Y, no your response. You know, um, I, I try to get them to um, to lay out their point of view. And I'm open to hearing what they have to say. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, in the cutting room, I put that in a larger context. So delay, I found it, I mean, jaw-dropping that he was so unapologetic and obviously clearly lying about uh, his association with Abramov uh, as if Jack was just another lobbyist, which is just baloney. Uh, But I think, you know, when you put that statement in the context of the film, you see that it just is a lie. Uh, But what was really interesting was to hear him say that there wasn't enough money in the political process. That was just a jaw dropper. So yeah. I, I found that pretty revealing. All of your films have uh, have great music. You're you're a great user of music, and you're also a great chooser of music. And I know from being in your office that you're a that you're a huge music fan as well, based on your uh, your CD collection there. Um, t- I'd love to hear about your process about. Um, your process of choosing music, and then how in the world are you able to get the, the clearances for all those, uh, you know, all those big artists? Uh, do you have connections in the industry, or, or how does that, do you have just a great music supervisor? How does that happen? 
I, I definitely have a great music supervisor, and he's the one who does all the clearances. But over time, we've worked out a strategy. And basically, the strategy is, you know, we get on our hands and knees, and and we go out to them, and we hope to persuade them of the quality of the project and have them sign off. And then we have a favored nations deal, and it means that everybody gets paid the same. And if the film does well, they do well. But, you know, the initial payment is relatively low, but, uh, but you know, we, we peg it to, to performance so that nobody feels like they're being ripped off. Um, in terms of how we pick the music, I mean, I, I think music to me plays a couple of roles. You know, one is it can sometimes be you find the right music for the right character. You know, you, you actually use music to, to be, to, to, as, uh, as composers do, to, to, to insinuate some aspect in, in the character. So, you know, for Casino, for Abramov, you know, we kept coming up with Howlin' Wolf. That just seemed, there's something about that, that gut bucket blues, you know, with, with this kind of, um, gleefully evil, um, vibe that, that seemed, um, that seemed just right. Um, and, uh, and, uh, for Tom DeLay, we found, you know, this song, Bring on the Bling which is not only funny in terms of the money, but also the hip-hop vibe in that, in, in that aspect. You know, it has a kind of, it's, it's mild for, for hip-hop, but, but in the context of Tom DeLay, it has a kind of gangsta vibe, which I think is true to the sort of swagger of him, but it's also ironic. I mean, obviously, it's, he's, a different, <laughs> he's not from the hip-hop world. Um, so... Um, so that's what we look for, and and then the other way, the other thing I look for is something that is songs that serve a kind of toe tapping Greek chorus kind of vibe, where the the song kind of stands either for a place or 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 a comment on the material by me, and uh, and it's kind of a toe tapping Greek chorus. I kind of like that vibe. It's obvious from shooting the opening scene that you had a lot of fun shooting. I mean, as, as much fun as you can have shooting something that was a tragic event, recreating something sure. that was a tragic event. But uh, you, you could feel the fun that y'all had shooting that. Uh, uh, any uh, any possibility of a, of a narrative film in your in your future? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm certainly talking about it with a number of people. There's a couple of projects that are that are uh, that are coming up, and, and a couple that I'm developing myself. So, you know, fiction film development is very tough, but uh, but we're getting there, and, and some of the projects I'm talking about are pretty exciting. Casino Jack encompasses so much, um, not only so much time and so many events, but so many themes, and it, and it addresses such a um, large problem of, of corruption in Washington. Um, what what do you feel like? It sounds like a hokey question, but what do you what, what do you feel like the lessons that we can take away from? I mean, what's the from the story, from the film, from the yeah? No, I don't think it's a hokey film. question. I think it's a good question. I think the lesson is, got to take the money out of the electoral system. It just has to happen because if it doesn't happen, we're done. We're done as a democracy. Um, and it won't be easy, particularly in in light of the recent Citizens United decision. Uh, by the Supreme Court, but I think it's it, it is possible, and we just have to decide as a, as a nation that that it's that important. I mean, right now, you know, Congress people and senators, you know, spend two to three days out of every week raising money. We're paying them to raise, we're electing them and paying them to raise money. That's just obscene. Not to mention the bad decisions that are made as a result of that, uh, of, of the constant need to get money and so be swayed by, you know, what, what money demands. You know, there's a, and so we have a website called takepart.com, which participant put up for us. And it's got some great things on it. One is it, it has uh, it connects you with bills that are currently in Congress that that are attempting to get to some kind of public financing, and also it has a great program which identifies exactly where each congressperson and and senator, where your own congress congressperson and senator gets their money. And that's really usually a, an eye opener in terms of understanding how they vote on stuff. So you know that's that's the way forward. It's not perfect, but but there is there is definitely something to do and something that should be done.